One of the most gravitating aspects of the John Wick films is, of course, the unique world it presents, but how you specifically capture it, whether the camera is above the action following John Wick as he blasts his way out of a building or Hiroyuki Sonata engaging in sword play in the green light or white lights in an art gallery shoot uh, shootout as they're pulsing. How do you give each scene its own visual appeal that communicates all kinds of details about characters, about the characters who inhabit the frame, all while maintaining a consistent language with the rest of the film and the other Wick films? I don't know, no. <laughs> uh, and of course, you know, when when we start to talk about John Wick 4, uh, I went to Japan with Keanu and Chad. Before mm -hmm. John Wick 4 was just after John Wick 3, we went to Japan and just get some inspirations about, you know, how could we, where could we go? How could it look? And then a half year later, whatever number four was coming up, especially Chad, of course, have a lot of, lot of ideas about how the, color palette should go, how it should look. And we right away talked a lot about, you know, we want to go bigger, we want to have it more strong, we want to have it more colorful, more, and more black as well. You know, we want to do it a little bit more darker than we have the other ones, mm -hmm. even, and much more single source lighting, you know, we want to have the light falling off of the actors' faces. Uh, and then we start to talk to um, the production side, Kevin, myself, and, and Chad, you know, about, what, how should the look be from each locations, you know, and then we start to look up for locations, there's a lot of, and when we find the location, we was going into much more specific color palette discussions about how each character and each scene should be lit color wise. Mm -hmm. uh, and how much light, how, how much the light should move because when you're in the hotel, the light is moving a lot, you know, you have this like, fluorescence that's just swinging around uh, and the light is moving much more there. And when you're coming into some of the churches, it's just a little bit more static mm -hmm. and it's still blue and orange. Right. And when we have uh, Scar Skull, you know, that's more or less sunset all the time in his scenes when first time we see him in, in his office, then we are coming to the museum, and then in the end, of course, we are coming to Sankra Kirk. You know, all the scenes with him is much more golden. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's like, we just try to, but that's a that's a, a split between locations and his character. So right. we try to do that, try to follow, you know, some of the characters with a special color palette, and then follow the locations as well. Right. So it's not like every time he's one access on that, he has to be orange or blue or whatever. You know, it's more like it's, it's placed between the character and the locations. Mm -hmm. I, I mentioned uh, visual details that communicate things about characters. One of my favorite shots is at the cards table with Killa. Behind him is a set of lights that paint an image of a throne. And then you yeah. have fans above that kind of create a beat that matches the intensity of the moment how so how deeply I, I know you said like characters and also being in the location kind of dictates a lot of, of of the decisions but how deeply do you think about each scene how much is instantaneous upon reading the script or watching uh, the stunt crew kind of go through the motions of things and uh, just like what, what all comes to you in the creation and execution of a scene like that? I mean, we find that location. I knew we want to have some moving lights because putting that light up is like a big deal, you know, so they have to be prepped weeks before. Mm. So we are finding the locations, figure out your Kevin is making a kind of a sketch, you know, for the design. And then we talk about, I'm talking to my team about how we can do this because I want to have that feeling. I saw that from, I think I, I saw that I stole it from a rock and roll. I think it was the Rolling Stones concert where they have mm. something like this. This is amazing. So we try to do a couple of tests on that and, you know, show it to Chad and what about that? So it's like, it's a process that's going on all the time when you're shooting because a lot of the locations is not locked when you start to shoot. You know, we're just chasing some of the locations because we cannot find the right locations when you're starting to shoot. And that was one of those places where we, 
because there was a on that specific scene there was a lot of discussions about should it be like as it is in the movie or should it be, be much 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 smaller should it be much more you know onto the table more or less like a very small room and i was fighting very hard to make it big 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 and mm. then again i think that feeling about he should have some backlight he should have that feeling about he's sitting on the throne and those lights are moving around uh, and that's the same those lights are coming with him when he's coming down to fight under the waterfall mm. that's the same you know right. his back line is the same line as there was back behind him in the office and you know that is something i try to do because i think there was it could be like he's fighting with the throne light behind him um and you know it's just some some ideas you do and you try to follow them and it it works and it's, of course it's great yeah yeah well clearly you did think very deeply about it you mentioned no, I, try, I try to do it as much as i can we're doing we're doing very little oh by the way we try to be very prepared yeah because yeah. it's so big, so big and you know you have to be again you know the action is so specific and it's so tough for the cast to do that so you have to be ready and you know preparing is like pre-lighting and pre preparation is the goal for those kind of movies i think for all movies yeah well the the hard work shows so i i, I really do like i mentioned at the top hope you're proud of this because you should be uh you mentioned uh having some inspiration from a rolling stone show what are some of the most obscure places of inspiration that that uh, came to framing this film. There's so many moments, uh, such as the long sequence as we uh, follow through the, the the actual art display in the background. It's the long tracking shot. And there's so much to take from that. But all throughout the film, there are moments that feel like I could hang it on my wall, but there's so much that you could just kind of pause it and think very deeply about what it's what what the inspiration may be, be uh, may be but also what i'm getting out of it so uh is there any other like very obscure places that uh like a something that you may have you know studied in school that was like i'm gonna tuck that way tuck that away in my back pocket or maybe you didn't think about it until you I came think about it like that just try to follow you know the screenplay and the locations and tries to do it as 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 cool as possible you know as powerful as possible it's not like i'm sitting and looking in million books and we of course we're talking about framing we're talking about lighting we don't, we, i don't think we're talking so much about framing because it's coming pretty clear to us how we want to do that but you know atmospheric you know ideas about some weird still photographer have taken a weird picture in japan and said, this is a color palette we like to have that, and then we are going further with that, you know, because mm -hmm. I think our color palette in John Week 4 is pretty special, you know, it's not like, that's some ideas we have seen on a picture somewhere, but we just try to do that even more. For example, on the top, first time you see Keanu Reef on the top of the hotel where he's standing in front of that round thing with a red light, and he has some edged, blue edge lights and blue edge light on his face, you know, it's pretty, pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah. I know we're just about a time uh, out of time. I'll ask or I'll close by asking what are, what is the shot that you're most proud of? That's not one shot that's most proud of. There's, there's a lot of challenge in the movie. And I think the biggest challenge for me was one of the biggest one was Sankra Kirk, because we shot that for real. You know, that is shot night for day. So we shot in the nighttime and we have the light coming up on the big cranes and stuff like that. That was, that was something I have never done in location before. For me, it was that like, do I really go the right way here? Because sometimes you don't know that before you're standing there. Of course, we have some pre preparation. But that was for me like, okay, this is, maybe I'm crazy, but it works. So that yeah. was for me, like, wow. Because that was a big, big thing, you know, it was bringing a big crane on the top of the Sankra Kurt, the church and all that. But that was like, that was for me very complicated. Yeah, yeah, I but, can imagine. But we, we did it together.